Good morning, welcome back to next episode of my DC2 race car build. Um, it's the 2nd of January, I had a bit of a break since the last one. Um, when we left off I just competed in the Bunbury Rally Sprint, uh, which is the first proper event from the car after the shakedown, and went really well in the morning. Um, first four runs were great, just kept getting faster and faster, very rusty driving. But in the afternoon had the same problem come back where the fuel system clogged up and the car started missing, so I retired it from the day. That was back in November. Um, I'd had a pretty busy few months getting the car finished before that, sort of 60, 70 hours a week, including full-time job, trying to get it up and running. Um, so I just had enough really and put it away for a month while caught up on life, enjoyed the uh, holiday break, and now we're back to it. So today I'll be stripping down the fuel system, so removing the tank from the car and draining it and I'll show you sort of, I'll try and see if there's any of the craps inside the tank, uh, flushing out the system components and getting that ready uh, for the fuel tank to be properly, like professionally cleaned and relined to stop it, to stop the, you know, I guess the, the tank insides stripping off from the E85 and, and continuing to clog up the, the fuel filter and the injectors. And I'll also work on a bunch of little bits, so like I'll set up a, um, a a table in the in the ECU to drive the fuel pump at certain percentages based on engine demand to reduce fuel temperature in the engine bay, a few things like that. We've got a bunch of jobs to run through. So first step for me is to get the car up and start draining the fuel system. We'll do that and we'll catch up once the fuel tank's out of the car and we can have a look. Okay, so the car's up on stands and I've pulled out the fuel system. Um, first thing I actually did was compression test the engine. That was all good, they're perfectly even within like one PSI across all four cylinders, so it's really good. Uh, one thing that I was worried about with it lean misfiring is potentially burning a hole in a piston or compromising something in the engine. So, so far so good, we'll see how it holds up. Um, yeah, so fuel system's completely out, just blocked off the injector holes with some rags at the moment. Pulled it all to bits, um, been quite interesting having a look at things, so I'll do my best to show you. The first is the uh, lift pump filter sock. That's actually relatively clean. Um, it's, I imagine it's a fairly coarse sock and it's not really going to pick up much. Um, but yeah, that hasn't really discolored at all. If we look over at the filter sock on the tank, uh, the pump from the surge tank, that's a lot more crappy. So that used to be white. Uh, that's now sort of stained, and you can see there's a whole bunch of crap around the pickup just in there. Moving on to the fuel filter itself, um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it's pretty well clogged up with sort of like a thin film of shit, um, pretty much all the way around it, which was as expected. And if we look in the surge tank, there's a lot of sort of milkiness, and you can see over the side there's a bunch of sort of, just sort of residue on the wall there, so quite a lot of dirt and crap inside that. We'll move over to the fuel tank itself, and we can see where all that sludge came from. <clears throat> so again, absolutely no idea if you can see this, but there's a whole bunch of little... I'll try and move them around. Um, basically just the inner lining of the tank has completely failed and come off, and that's will be caused by the E85 because um, ethanol is such a good solvent. But there's a lot of crap in there. And if we hopefully get some light into the, the fuel tank pickup bowl, you can see there's a heap of crap built up in there. And looking elsewhere through the tank, um, yeah, there's just sort of stuff everywhere, and I can sort of see on some of the walls where the, where the lining has come off. So, pretty confident that's what our issue is. That is essentially the the fuel tank line is disintegrating as well as just like, you know, rust and whatever other shits in the fuel tank. Like you look at the sender. That's a bit crappy too, so I'll clean that up. Uh, but all that's making its way through the fuel system, uh, getting through the fuel filter, which is quite interesting. It's like a 10 micron filter, filter, and finding its way into the injectors and because the, the tolerances in the injectors are so fine, it just clogs up super quick. So Next job is basically to flush out and clean all of these, or just use sort of degreaser and um, some turps or something like that to get rid of all the crap out of them. Um, I have a new fuel filter, I didn't want to reuse, reuse this one. 
I'll get the injectors uh, professionally cleaned and flow tested and with the fuel tank outside um, I'll drop that off at a specialist place to get that properly chemically cleaned inside and relined with an epoxy that's uh, E85 safe. So that's it for this update. Um, I'll carry on with this now and I've probably got a few other jobs so I may catch up later on but otherwise next time I see you we'll be uh, reassembling the fuel system. Okay, it's a couple of weeks later. Um, we've sent away the fuel tank and the injectors to get cleaned. Uh, that's all come back, which is good. So fuel tank is looking fantastic. This was done by Perth Radiators. A um, lot of money for it, but less money than buying a new tank and shipping it in from America, which is exorbitant freight costs. So clearly they've cleaned and painted the outside, so it looks super nice. And on the inside you can see there's a, a red epoxy coating in there, so that's an E85 safe. Um, liner, so they've chemically stripped all the old liner, given whatever bath it needs to have, and then um, yeah, surrounded the insides of it with a proper E85 safe epoxy, which is good. So that's all ready to go back in. Um, got the rest of the fuel system components just sitting over there, ready to go. I've got new socks for the for both pumps, and I've got a new fuel filter as well. And I also had the injectors cleaned and flow tested. I'll put up some images of the before and after of those. Um, one in particular was like 25% down, which is about the same as what happened last time. So clearly that's the, the reason for the, the car landing out and then eventually missing. Uh, so that was done by Janad at 80 Years Automotive here in Perth. He's got a fantastic rig. It's like a proper Motec ECU that runs his injector cleaning and flow testing unit. It's a really good setup. So he's the best and he does a really fantastic job. It helps that he's about three minutes down the road from me as well. So what I'll do now is I'll reinstall the fuel system in the car. All the lines, including the lines underneath the car, are flushed. Um, I've got a little bit of E85 here, so I've just run them through the lines again just now to just double check and pushed it out with air. So yeah, we'll get the tank in, we'll get the, all the fuel lines and surge tank and um, injectors into the engine bay, and then we'll have a crack at starting it up. Alrighty, so fuel tank and fuel system is all back in, pretty straightforward. Um, everything popped in pretty nicely. So what I need to do now is prime the fuel system and check for leaks. So there's two stages to this. First stage is I need to fill the surge tank up because otherwise if I turn both pumps on, you know, with the fuel pump button on the keypad, um, the main pump will run dry for ages and that's not very good for it. So I'll show you how we do that in the Heltec software. On the laptop I've got the fuel pump section uh, set up and all I've done is the main fuel pump output so I've got like a lift pump and a main pump um, I've removed the PDM assignment for that so that um, essentially that that main pump in the, in the surge tank doesn't run so what I'll do now is I'll manually turn on the the fuel pumps off the, the keypad of the car and we'll let that surge tank fill up so let's go and do that So I can hear that the lift pump is now running and we'll get you in close and hopefully you can hear that surge tank filling up. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just waiting for it to fill and then I feel it go down the return line which is the second line here and once I feel some fuel coming through it then I can go and turn that pump off and I know the surge tank is full. It does take quite a while, the lift pump is quite small on this. Cool, I can feel that coming out that line now. So that fuel pump's now off. Now what I want to do to prime the whole system and check is back in the Heltec I'm going to reassign that main fuel pump. going to reset the prime time back to three seconds so that means that the 
uh, system once I key on the ignition will run for three seconds um, and that will pressurize everything up but I'll also turn the pumps on manually just to check everything through so I'll reset the ECU from here and that will uh, prime it up actually it would except I probably want to plug in the power give me a second I'll do that take two I have actually plugged the power back into the pump which would help did mean everything I did on the laptop was completely redundant, but whatever, it still showed you the process of how I would normally do it. So now let's try that again. I'll just reset the ECU from the computer so it will prime the fuel system, and hopefully you'll hear both pumps. Again, it would if I had the isolator on. Cool, so you can hear both of those quite loud now. Um, what I'll do is just turn the pumps on manually and then we'll have a look around for leaks. Cool, that seemed to work perfectly. That's what I love about AN fittings is they, once they're done up and they're snug, they're generally very well sealing. Um, yeah, fuel system's primed, there's no leaks, everything's ready to go. What I'll try and do now is start up the car, I guess. All right, let me check a few things on the laptop and I'll jump back in before we start it. Okay, just made sure all the right bits and pieces were on in the ECU before I do this. So let's make sure, not in gear. That worked perfectly. Uh, on the laptop screen, I was just looking at all the vital signs, so oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant pressure, that sort of thing. Everything was where it needs to be, so pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, fuel system sorted, hopefully. We do need to do a test day to put it under some pressure to get that sorted out, but um, that won't be for a few weeks' time. What I will do now is, I'm in the last event, something I was concerned with was fuel temperature. So this little surge tank here, with a big old 044 pump in it, um, flows a lot more fuel than what the engine needs the vast majority of the time, especially when we're sitting there idling, like waiting in line to, to go for our run. Because all it's doing is recycling fuel through that rail and then straight back into the surge tank. So the fuel temperature was getting up to like 70 degrees Celsius, which is quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is attempt to set up a table in the ECU which depending on the injector duty cycle at any given time will just turn the pump down so if the injectors only need 10% need duty cycle the pump only runs at 10% I've calculated it all out based on the size of the injectors uh, the fuel flow they require and the, the flow of the pump and it is percent for percent basically it's quite nicely how it all ended up and that includes 30% of headroom so let's say the injectors are at 50% duty cycle the pump will be running at 50% and that'll be prov providing 130% of the fuel that the injectors need at that point in time. So there's a good margin for error there. That's something else that's going to need some testing. So um, I'll take it out on track and like you'll very quickly see if the fuel pressure starts dropping under full load. Uh, and the ECU already has engine protection parameters built into it. So if the fuel, fuel pressure drops, it just drops straight into a limp mode. So very little chance of doing any damage. So I'll have a play around on the laptop and hopefully get that sorted now. 
So that was way easier than I expected actually. So these here are my very quick calculations. Um, basically just calculating out the litres per hour that I need um, at each percentage of injector duty cycle. Um, and that gives me a little table down here. So essentially if the injectors are doing 20%, I need the pump to be doing 21%, 40%, 42 and so on and so forth. So the way to set that up in the Heltec software, uh, we can see here under primary pump mode, I've got it to digital duty cycle. Uh, previously it was digital switched output, just like the lift pump is before it, which means when it's on, it's on at 100%. Duty cycle means you can set what that uh, percentage is. And if we jump to that setup table here, um, I changed the table around from the de default. What I've done is got the uh, stage one inject injection average duty cycle. And I've set up the table so that the, uh, the values that I calculated are in there. Now it looks a wee bit different. So the way this table works is above 0%, you'll get 21% of the pump. Above 20% of injectors, you'll get 42% of the pump above 40% of the injectors you'll get 62% of the pump. So all that kind of means is back here at each of these injection points that's what I needed. So above that injection point, so between 20 and 40, I'm going to take the higher value uh, just to be safe. So when it's idling it should only be running at 20% but what we're going to do now is turn the car on and hopefully it'll work. Um, this table in the Hiltec software it'll actually point out which cell you're in. Uh, so hopefully when it's idling, it's just less than 20% duty cycle and we'll be able to see that the pump is running at 20% and hopefully hear that the pump is running at 20% too. So we'll just go switch the car on. They work perfectly. So as the fuel pump was priming I could hear that it was barely running and as soon as the car started up uh, like I was pointing out on the screen it was in the first cell of the table so it was uh, between 0 and 20 percent and then over here I added the average duty cycle of the injectors and while I was idling the duty cycle was 2 percent so stuff all. What I'll be doing is I'll be logging that duty cycle uh, while I'm out testing on the track so I'll be able to see where it sits uh, throughout the rev range and when it's under full load um, and I can make any adjustments from there. Honestly I don't expect to be using more than like 40% of these injectors so I think I'll be pretty well set. So that wraps up what I've done to hopefully fix the fuel system. Best outcome will be that uh, I no longer have the car leaning out over successive runs at the track. Um, the, new, the new coating in the fuel tank shouldn't come off now that it's you know covered with the 85. Like the old one you saw earlier in the video, just the amount of crap that was floating around in that tank. I was very quickly clogging up all the injectors. Uh, so yeah, really hoping that it fixes it this time. But the only way to find out is track testing, which we'll do in a few weeks. That'll wrap this up. But what I've also done is bought a new trailer. So previously I've just been borrowing trailers off friends. Um, this is a single axle tilter trailer. It's super lightweight, super easy to manoeuvre and that the deck itself actually tilts back. Um, I've got a bunch of modifications to do, to do to that. To I'll cover that in a separate video, I just want some bit of a birthday, so I'll probably end up repainting it, giving it some new wheels and tyres, um, and playing around with these tracks. Because the distance between those two guards is exactly the same as the distance between the, as the, the width of the front wheels of the Integra. So it's tight, but uh, we can make it work. I've got some modifications to do that. The reason I went with such a small trailer is I live down a long driveway, it's a real pain in the ass to try and back a trailer in and if it's 
a double axle trailer, you just can't spin it around or maneuver it. So these singles are great. It's got more than enough weight capacity for such a light car like the Integra. Um, and they tow great and it was nice and cheap too. It was about half the cost of building one. So we'll hopefully get to that in the next video. Anyway, that wraps up the fuel system fixes. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.